Last week, uh, you read the news, right? They did this global study of countries on retirement. The Singapore ranked on the bottom, uh, least ready for retirement. Replacement, I think, 25%. So what they say is, of all the countries they study, uh, Singaporeans, when they retire, uh, are able to have the least amount of money to retire with. Now, on top of that, we contribute the most in the world for contribution, 36% a year. So something might be wrong, right? So, you've got to understand this, that uh, many of the cases that we see today are people who are old and don't have money. Uh, how much do the cleaners at Potopase Town Council get paid? No, don't know. But, you know, cleaning, cleaners pay the big issue today, right? Mm -hmm. right? Most of them are earning less than $1,000. Okay. Now, why do they have to work uh, at 70 plus, 60 plus, 80 plus, you know? I've seen people working uh, 10 hours a day for $800, you know. Why? Because they don't mind too tired. So what I'm going to say next probably is more important than the healthcare of these people, right? You say you sick, you, you just, you know, go to the restaurant, don't come home, right? But if you are old, uh, you have no choice, right? You will survive. Okay. So why do, we, why, do, why do so many people end up with so little money that they cannot retire? One reason is they use too much for the HDB. Okay? Because you, know, you don't assume uh, that when I'm old, uh, I can downgrade. No? Downgrading is a big issue in Singapore. Why? To downgrade, uh, you want to downgrade to a new BTO, you must have stayed at least five years, apply to get a BTO, and as a second timer, your chance now is only 15%. Wait three, four years for the flat to come, right? And pay a resale levy also, you know. Okay? So if you need to downgrade to a resale flat, the pricing differential may be very little. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, which type of property has the best return in Singapore historically? Different type of flat, you know, which mm -hmm. one the best? Banglo la, what la, you know, you think, la? Okay. The second highest return of all flat types of housing type la, is two room flat. The third highest is three room flat. That means a lot of demand, no supply, you know. Mm -hmm. So imagine most Singaporeans who have four room flat, then you downgrade to three room. Uh. Uh, hardly any money left to retire. Uh. Don't forget, you know, when you downgrade, it's, if it costs you a lot to move to a smaller flat, you don't have enough money also, you have a problem. Okay? So, uh, for two room and three room people, they have the HDB lease buyback scheme to help you. That means, uh, you're allowed to stay in the house for another 30 years. Then they like, give five or 10,000 to your CPF. And then every month give you five hundred dollars, you know, like annuity. Uh. But the problem I have explained to you is what happens you are alive after the years? Right now it's an open question. Uh. When people ask what happens if you are still alive, they say when the time comes, let me tell you. <laughs> and so, uh, and uh, from a financial perspective, uh, you are giving up the ownership of your house, you know. So no matter how you come there, actually you lose money on that. Uh. Right? Mm. Imagine uh, a flat worth three hundred four thousand today. Thirty years later, must be worth like a lot, right? You know. Okay. Then you give up all this appreciation in your house uh, to get five hundred dollars a month. Actually, no reason. Okay. Now, of course, the other option is to uh, downgrade to a studio apartment. Uh. But now the studio apartment costs more than the two room flat. Uh. It's around uh, hundred ninety thousand, hundred thousand, and that one also for thirty years. Right. Same problem. Uh. After 30 years, life happens. I will let you know. Okay. Now, studio apartment, the other problem is the house is not yours, you know. So, during these 30 years, uh, if you, if for some reason you cannot stay there, then that's it, you know. Uh, don't have to say, like, I got refund for 10 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, to avoid all these uh, so called uh, you know, retirement issues, uh, where you have to worry about downgrading, move to studio, okay, my suggestion is for most people. Uh, you know, you buy a reasonable flat you're happy with, then you make your CPF money work harder. So <coughs> you make money. Okay, what do you mean by make your CPF money work harder? Ordinary account rate is 2.5, right? In fact, in the study that just came up last week, the global study, they say the main reason why uh, most people don't have enough money is because the interest rate is too low. Right? So you have to make your money work harder. Well, your money work, like Alex has been telling you at the start of this session, uh, make your money work harder means you have to invest your CPF. Huh? Okay. First 20,000 of the CPF audit account cannot be invested. The first 50,000 of the special account cannot be invested. Uh, so the amount of that, right, if you, you, know, if you can try to invest it and make your money work harder. Right? Because if your money don't go, inflation today is 5%. Uh, 
So take the audit account interest of 2.5, the money getting smaller every year. Right? So you've got to make it work harder. A few reasons are, uh, one of course is, come to 55, you have to set aside the minimum sum of 139,000. We are still only about 1 in 8 people who turn 25 have that kind of money uh, in the CPF. Then the other 7 don't have. Right? Why? Because the money is not growing fast enough. Now, of course, the ideal situation is we can, if we can all give our money to domestic. Uh, domestic was 17% a year in the last 34 years. Uh. So imagine if you got 5 or 17, uh, by the time you reach 55, you got a lot of money to draw, right? Uh, but the conceptually is the same. You have to try to make your money work harder. Because otherwise, you end up like a lot of people that we see. Uh, got a 55, I have no money to withdraw, I don't even make the minimum sum. Now, of course, uh, the assumption is that from 55, uh, you still have a good, decent paying job. Uh. Right, so that's another issue. Huh? That's why they have re-employment act how that you know to offer you re-employment at 62. Their parents maintenance tribunal can sue your children at 60, you know, right? So all these all these policies are uh, is to help people to continue to have money uh, in the later stage in their life. Uh. Okay? So try to make the money work harder. I'm not gonna repeat what Alex told you earlier, but briefly, uh, uh, you put your money in a globally diversified portfolio of about 40% equity, 40% bond, 20% commodities. Then every quarter you do three quarterly rebalancing over that. Right? Whenever you need money to pay for your house or pay for children's education, you sell whichever of the dozen funds in your CPI that's gonna have the most on it, keep doing that. No? So hopefully if all things work well, okay, then at 55 you have more money, you can take up more money. Uh, at uh, 65, you have enough minimum sum. Your life entity, the amount should be fairly decent to see which you want. Okay. Next, let me talk a bit about CPF minimum sum. Uh. Currently, it's 139,000. Okay. What does that mean? For those who are turning 55 this year, okay, if you have less than the minimum sum in your ordinary and special account combined, uh, you can take 10% of the amount. So also you have 100,000, this year 35, you take $10,000. Okay. Next year from 1st January, if you have less than the minimum sum, you can only draw $5,000. So next year you have 100,000, you can draw 5,000. Okay. What happens to the rest of money? They go into the CPF life, eh? at 65 they pay you a penalty. Now CPF life has been reduced to two plans only. Eh? In the past you had uh, four plans, now it's two plans. So, how to decide which of the two plans to choose? One pay you more a month, one pay you less a month, right? The one who pay you more in time early, you get less, huh? So very simple, huh? you just go to the CPF website, use a CPF life estimate here calculator, then you can figure out, no? you can decide. Huh? First, you must keep in mind huh, that if you take more money every month, then if you die early, your dependence may get nothing. So it depends on whether you have dependence and how old your dependence are. Huh? Suppose you have young children, uh, you take the one that pay more, then you die early, the children get nothing, they will starve to death. So, okay? so these are the basic uh, considerations that you can make uh, regarding CP of life. Now then there are people who say, uh, what if I plan to migrate? Right? For those who plan to migrate, they probably want to give up the citizenship and take up all the CPF, right? So then you must choose the CPF life plan that pay the least one. Because the one that pay the least uh, has what they call more money left in your retirement, retirement account to allow you to take it up. Now this affects PR as well. Huh? So permanent resident the same, right? Uh, it's compulsory from 1st January next year. Once it go into the CPL life scheme, I think you cannot say, you know, reverse and take back one. Huh? It's stuck there already. So, and, and for people who don't make a selection, automatically you go to the balance plan, which is the one that pays more. Okay? So these are important things that you need to figure out uh, regarding your CPF. Questions? Okay, next talk about credit. Uh, you see pawn shop now everywhere have, right? 